Shinsuke Nakamura begins to rebuild himself. Cesaro steps up to face Aleister Black. And Kevin Owens channels his inner Stone Cold. Your full SmackDown Live review starts right after this. So here's a question for you guys. Do you know what tomodachi means? In Japanese, that means friendship. And it's also a great clothing brand that was made for friends by friends. The artists for this clothing are grassroots independent young artists trying to make a living off of their art. And this website serves to provide them with a platform to showcase their work and give them the opportunity to put amazing art on clothing that people can wear to support and promote them. So what kind of clothing can you find on this website? Well, it's all inspired by the Japanese streetwear, straight from Tokyo. And it's got everything from men's t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts to women's clothing of hoodies and t-shirts. And accessories, such as beanies, bags, cases, snap bags. And there's also a premium collection with hoodies, sweatshirts, and accessories. It ships around the world. And you can find them at tomodachiclothing.com. That's T-O-M-O-D-A-C-H-I clothing.com. That's tomodachiclothing.com. And you can also find them on Instagram at Tomodachi Clothing if you want to get a sampling of their their clothing line, which has some really cool designs on uh, some of their shirts and uh, accessories. So check out TomodachiClothing.com. You'll be glad you did. Welcome to the WWE Podcast. Your place for the most passionate wrestling analysis on the web. Just turn Roman heel. What is WWE waiting for? When other wrestling podcasts put you to sleep, you can count on the WWE Podcast to keep you engaged and asking for more. I've been watching wrestling for over 20 years, and that was one of the best matches I've ever seen. This is unlike any other wrestling analysis. So without any further delay, let's get the show started right now. This is your SmackDown Live review on Wednesday, July 10th. 2019 it was a good smackdown i thought it was a solid show from top to bottom and clearly it was a show designed around kevin owens something that we haven't seen in quite a while kevin owens was the highlight of the show he started the show and he closed the show that's a pretty solid sign that wwe was making him one of the focal points if not the focal point of the show that that's what main eventers do that's what stars of shows do they begin and end the show um and so it was it was it's nice to see kevin owens just finally getting what he deserves and showing what he can be capable of now it's a couple of weeks into his true babyface run i hope this is long term and that they give this time to breathe and they don't just decide to pull the plug just because a week or two doesn't you know, pan out the way that they had hoped and that they give this time. And I believe that they will. Uh, Eric Bischoff is running SmackDown. I mean, honestly, like I don't even know. I don't even know who is in charge of or, or who is on what brand anymore because this wildcard rule is nothing more than WWE's way of being able to just have the same four guys of their top stars, perceived top stars on both shows. This isn't the wild card rule. No, 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 no. This is the Drew McIntyre Roman Reigns rule. Um, it, it just, it's just, no, yeah, I don't know. I've spent too much time talking about the wild card rule that is anything but wild. This is the lame card rule or I don't know. There's probably something funnier. I just can't think of it. It is. It's just the rule that is nothing more than, again, a way to um, alleviate their booking and be able to include the the big stars on both shows, which inevitably takes away from the stars that could be getting, uh, new stars could, that could be getting airtime to create those new stars instead of just leaning on the same, uh, the, the, the same suspects, right? So, okay, well, I'm going to get into the nitty-gritty. I want to talk about Kevin Owens promo, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, talking point coming out of the show. Uh, hits a stunner on Shane McMahon at the end of the show. Um, it, it was just, I thought, well done. All around A-plus night for Kevin Owens, so I'm going to get into the details of that. And also Alistair Black and Cesaro, who 
uh, we finally get as revealed to be the first opponent for Alistair Black, the first real opponent for Alistair Black. And I'm intrigued by this match, not just from the Alistair Black standpoint of what he can do in, uh, on the main roster solo in a heel role, but also Cesaro. How many times are we going to reinvent this guy? So interested in that as well. We're going to get to Nikki and we're going to get to um, Bailey, who's getting anything but a big reaction these days. So lots to talk about. But first, guys, I want to welcome you to the show. This is the the show for you guys. This is a show by fan for fans. I get a lot of questions. You know, are you, are you really affiliated with WWE? Nope, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh I am not affiliated with WWE in any capacity, so there's your legalese. For those of you that think that I uh, work for WWE, I do not in any capacity whatsoever. This is me independently speaking my mind about the company and speaking it in a very truthful, I think easy-to-follow fashion and one that is not trying to mimic or mirror or uh, just be you know, a, a podcast that is like all the other wrestling podcasts and there's a lot of them out there and a lot of them are good. And admittedly they are. And you know what? I listen to them just because I have my own show. doesn't mean that I don't listen to other wrestling podcasts. I absolutely, do, absolutely do. And I would encourage everyone to, I mean, just because you listen to my show and you're a fan of my show, that's awesome. I, I appreciate you and thank you for being a listener. But if you're, you know, you want to learn more about wrestling and you want to get a different perspective, by all means, I mean, not that you need my permission, but I would encourage you to check out other podcasts because it gives you a bigger sense of the, the, the picture and it, it, ma- it makes you think in different ways than you normally would. I get a lot of um, knowledge from other shows. So, um, yeah, how about that for the rest of uh, the, the, the wrestling podcast world? Me giving a, a basically a free advertisement for every single wrestling podcast out there. But I really do mean that Um, I I really would encourage you. So let's just get into the biggest talking point of this show. I I mean, why are we, why are we wasting daylight or really actually it's nighttime where I'm at right now, but let's talk about Kevin Owens promo. And it, it was, while it was, I think designed to be a work shoot. We all know it was a work. I don't feel that it was trying to be more of a shoot than a work. It, it felt more um, planned out, and that's fine. I don't need everything to be a, a work shoot. Is that real? Was he supposed to say that? No. I'm fine with it feeling like it's a work, but a work that makes me intrigued and wants me to know what the next chapter is. And Kevin Owens meeting Dolph Ziggler in the parking lot. They brawl. You know, he, Kevin Owens gets kicked out of the arena, and Shane tells him to just leave. And Kevin Owens defies him and ends up at the top of the show, coming out and running down Shane McMahon, saying that he is taking up airtime for or from the stars that should be getting the time that he is sucking up. And I like how he echoed the fans' uh, sentiments. And maybe he's a listener to the show because I have said this on multiple, multiple, multiple occasions that, hey, the McMahons come out here months ago and they said, we're going to give you what you want. We're going to give you what you want. And Kevin Owens said, I don't think Shane McMahon being on my television screen is what I want. And it's true. And again, I am a Shane heel fan. I love seeing Shane as a heel get his ass kicked. Love it. But it's the volume of time that he has been taking up on TV that could be going to other stars. That is the problem. And so I like how Kevin Owens said that because it's coming to the fans' defense. The fans fans are able to live vicariously through him without Kevin Owens' pandering to the crowd and trying to be their, their night night in shining armor. And it's, it's, we, it's not just I, it's, we, you know, Seth Rollins is guilty of that. I'm tired of, you know, the, the baby faces saying it's, we, as if it's a collective, we like, you know, I, you know, you all, everybody here is my friend. And then when you're heel, it's you people, it's we, if you're a baby face and you people, if you're a heel, 
that's just, I guess, the way Vince McMahon envisions all heels to speak is people don't like when you say you people. Well, nobody, nobody does, I guess, but it's just kind of an overplayed card. I mean, figure out a way to address the, the fans in a different way, I guess. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I've just heard it so much, and everything's we. Look at what we're doing. I want you to come with me. So Kevin Owens isn't doing that so far. I like it. Kevin Owens just needs to just be Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens doesn't need to be anybody else. He doesn't need to change anything about himself, to be honest with you, other than attacking the crowd. I mean, you, you, I'm not saying that as a, as a babyface you can attack the audience and get away with it. No, that's not what I'm saying. But... I don't need Kevin Owens to completely flip all of a sudden just be this lovable, snuggly, cuddly, cuddly teddy bear that is suddenly concerned about what the fans think. And it's we and, and no, 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 no. Kevin Owens needs to stay exactly as he is, except he needs to be more credible in the ring, get some seriously big wins. Uh, you know, enough of the Kevin Owens on a massive losing streak. Take that away. Let's move on. Let's give Kevin some credible wins and let him be himself. That's the key. That's the key because fans love him as he is now. And I think that when WWE sniffs out somebody that the fans are getting behind when they're not supposed to, like Becky Lynch, they morph them into the uh, whatever they perceive as a baby face that the fans will love because once they... Once the fans get behind somebody, WWE feels that they know how to really ramp it up and give them the babyface version of that character. Let me ask you this. If you don't believe me, was Becky Lynch hotter as a heel that was supposed to be a heel that the fans cheered? Or was is she hotter as a babyface, the babyface version of her character? Answer that. So the, the, the real answer is here... In order to create a successful babyface in 2019, they don't necessarily have to be an anti-hero. But if the fans are cheering a heel that is an organic reaction to that character, they feel a connection, they love the way, the new edge that whoever he or she has. Here's the key to creating a successful babyface run for that character. Here's what you do. Get your pen and paper out and get ready to, to write here. Stretch your arms, stretch your wrist. Make sure that you have it ready and loosened up here because it's going to be a long one. Here's what you need to do. Nothing. Take, take, that, take a minute. Take a minute. Here's what you change. The answer is nothing. You don't do anything. You leave it as is. You continue to book that character to the way that the fans are reacting to them positively, positively, and you just put them against another heel that the fans truly don't like. Because that's how you turn somebody babyface, by keeping them a heel, edgy character that the fans love and can get behind, instead of turning them into a babyface version of that character. Whenever Again, it's like WWE goes, oh, oh, the fans are trying to get behind somebody. I think we can, I know what to do with this, this character. Let's turn him babyface. No, 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 no. They're already babyface, but you casting them as a heel, which I guess is also a testament to how terrible WWE is at creating heel characters or babyface characters for that matter. Sometimes, you know, this, this reaction can go both ways, you know? Um, so again, th this doesn't apply across the board always, but there are cases of it when you just leave everything alone. Let Becky be the anti-hero. She was hotter than blazes, hotter than you can get, about as hot as you can get. And then the WWE gets her behind her and starts making her smile and cracking stupid jokes and calling people dopes, which is, uh, you guys know how I feel about that. I'm not going to go on a rant. Dope is about as crappy of a, a, you know, a PG version of SOB as you can get. Becky, find another word, please. Jerk. I'll even go with jerk. I'll go with dork. I'll even go with dork. Anything. Please. Dope is... I don't think I've said the word dope ever in my life until Becky Lynch started using it. I'm serious. It's not, it's not a funny word. It's not a good word. It's not a word that 
is uh, it really makes me laugh or giggle or I think is a clever little line or cute little name to call the person. It's just lame. Lame, and a baby face should not be using it. Okay, let's move on to SmackDown Live as I go off on a random tangent. See, see what I did there? See, it's crazy, right? Crazy. Um, but Kevin Owens comes out and runs down Shane McMahon, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved what he said. Uh, Shane McMahon trying to cut his mic off circa uh, CM Punk when he did the infamous pipe bomb, you know, seven, eight years ago. And so that, it reminded me of that uh, where they just kept getting, cutting the mic from CM Punk. Um, and then he came out with a megaphone the next week and they, you know, you can't cut a uh, megaphone off. Right. So maybe Kevin Owens does that. And WWE thinks that people won't remember. I don't care, but I loved it. I, I think that was a great segment. And then um, security chases him out of the building later in the night in the main event. Of course, Roman Reigns is in the main event because well, he's Roman Reigns and uh, oh, don't worry. I'll get to Roman in a minute too. But Kevin Owens comes out after Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon are in the ring and Kevin Owens appears out of nowhere and ends up hitting a stunner on Shane. I love that too. Uh, he is being a very stone cold. Like that's how stone cold would hit his stunners. Just kind of out of nowhere, slide in the ring. Um, the, the, you know, the, the guy would turn around and boom, drops him. And Shane sells the stunner like a million bucks. Shane, Shane is just one of my favorites when he gets stunned. Uh, he, you know, he, he he pops up like there's springs in his legs. It's awesome. Uh, so Shane is a great foil for that move. Um, you know, he, he's obviously not stone cold and they call it the stunner, not the stone cold stunner, but I'm fine with it. It's one of those beloved moves ever. People have very fond memories of it. It is a, a, a quick hitting move that has so many great, great memories attached, at least for me anyway, uh, attached to it. So, and I don't view it as a ripoff. I'm fine with it. I mean, look what uh, Seth Rollins did stealing Triple H's pedigree for almost a year, maybe more after the, oh, we don't call it the curb stomp. It's just the stomp. Uh, How soft can you get? But, you know, there there is examples of that. Dolph Ziggler has stolen sweet chin music. Um, You know, the list goes on. So um, I'm fine with it. Uh, I'm curious to see what Stone Cold's take is. Maybe he's spoken about it on his podcast, but uh, I, I like what they've done. It was... Not, it was not overexposing Kevin Owens, and that's a key too. Kevin Owens was not overexposed on the show, of which, yes, of course, being two hours and not three certainly helps. But they didn't they didn't give us too much of Owens. They gave us enough to where I said, and I think the majority of fans said, "Ooh, I want more. I want to hear more from him. I want to see him create more chaos." And I do, and and I don't want Kevin to be stone cold or try to be a version of Austin. I want Kevin Owens to be Kevin Owens and, you know, telling it like it is. And maybe a little bit of the anti-hero is fine, but I don't need him trying to be stone cold. I don't need him next week flipping people off and, you know, smashing beers together. Uh, as, as awesome as all, all of that was, that's not what I want because he's Kevin Owens. He's not stone cold Steve Austin. So, um, but I'm on board with the stunner. It's certainly better than the springboard stunner that, uh, that uh, John Cena did for you know, a number of years that I just don't understand the reason for. But it's fine. Kevin Owens is the focal point right now, and I am on board for it. And I've been clamoring for it. So yay to WWE for giving Kevin the attention he deserves, at least for the week. Let's, uh, let's see how things manifest um, down the line here. Okay, we're going to take a quick sponsor break and then we're going to get to the rest of smackdown live including shinsuke nakamura who finally got a win in beating finn balor clean in the ring we're going to talk about that and of course we get more bailey and more nikki more nikki cross who is continuing to shine in my eyes in this uh this program with bailey and you know you're kind of forgetting that alexa bliss is out there right so um, we're going to get to all that as well and, of course, Cesaro, who's the one that knocked uh, on Alistair Black's door. So my thoughts on all of that right after this. And here's a question for you guys. Do you know what tomodachi means? In Japanese, that means friendship. And it's also a great clothing brand that was made for friends by friends. The artists for this clothing are grassroots independent young artists trying to make a living off of their art. And this website serves to provide them with a platform to showcase their work 
and give them the opportunity to put amazing art on clothing that people can wear to support and promote them. So what kind of clothing can you find on this website? Well, it's all inspired by the Japanese streetwear, straight from Tokyo, and it's got everything from men's t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts to women's clothing of hoodies and t-shirts and accessories such as beanies, bags, cases, snap bags, and there's also a premium collection with hoodies, sweatshirts, and accessories. It ships around the world, and you can find them at tomodachiclothing.com. That's T-O-M-O-D-A-C-H-I clothing.com. That's tomodachiclothing.com. And you can also find them on Instagram at Tomodachi Clothing. If you want to get a sampling of their, their clothing line, which has some really cool designs on uh, some of their shirts and uh, accessories. So check out TomodachiClothing.com. You'll be glad you did. All right, and welcome back. Let's get to Cesaro, who's the one that knocked on Aleister Black's door to pick a fight uh, with Aleister Black. I think that's a very good opponent for him, uh, for, for both guys. Both guys seem to be kind of at that same level right now. Uh, Alistair needs it. Needs and When I say the same level, I mean they both need each other equally. Because Cesaro certainly needs a program that is relevant and not just kind of going around changing gimmicks, being James Bond, being the bar. Uh, I mean, being you know, just kind of something in between with random music we've never heard. Uh, Cesaro needs an identity in the worst way, and that's been his Achilles heel his entire career. We don't know who the hell Alist or uh, who the hell Cesaro is, and I, I think with time, if given the proper amount of time, you will see Cesaro regain who he is, and I, I think that he should be at the point in his career now where he he could come up to Vince and say, "Hey, Vince, like this is who I am. Let's go with it," and maybe this is the start of that. Although he still is wearing the mouth guard that says the bar, please give it up. It's like it's like the guy you know after high school that continues to wear his high school ring, like you know shows over, pal. You know, take the ring off. Let's move on. And uh, I, I just don't see the bar is dissolved. So get rid of the bar uh, mouthpiece, please, Cesaro. If you're going to reinvent yourself and redefine yourself, you don't need to be hanging on to gimmicks that are really dead, to be honest. So. Um, but but again, I, I'm excited for this because Cesaro needs Alistair Black to get in a super relevant program and become relevant and be able to define his character, redefine his character again. Um, and Alistair Black needs Cesaro because Cesaro is the bigger star here. It's a better matchup for him in terms of chemistry, I think. Uh, I think it will be. And Cesaro can make... Alistair Black look like a million bucks. Cesaro is the ultimate professional. He can make Alistair Black look great and vice versa, I think. So it's really a win-win all the way around for these two. And I like how Cesaro said less than trying to get into a, quote, promo. Um, he just kind of said a few words, and that was that. And Alistair Black, well, he mocked Alistair Black's promo. He said he's here to pick a fight. And I like how he enunciates that word. I don't know why that just kind of like, oh, that's cool. No one's ever done that. Uh, and Alistair Black was just like, you know, orgasmic in, in excitement that somebody finally knocked at his door and he's going to fight him in extreme rules. So, I, I, you know, look, I'm fine with it. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see the outcome of the match on Sunday, whether they go with the flat out Alistair Black when he's, you know, Alistair Black it seems to be more of the future than Cesaro does at this time, uh, given the amount of TV time Alistair Black has gotten versus Cesaro over the years. Well, not over the years, but over the last couple of weeks I met. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, my predictions will be coming tomorrow, by the way. There's a quick plug. Tomorrow will be my uh, co-host show with Anthony, Anthony DeMarco. And we'll be going over all of the Extreme Rules matches, including predictions and uh, some other cool stuff. So uh, tune in for that for sure. It's always my longer show. So if you like this show in uh, longer form, you will get that tomorrow night. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, so there's my cheap plug. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm looking forward to this match. I, I'm just, I can't say much more about it than that. I mean, I don't want to you know, overhype it. You know, at the same time, it's something for both guys to do. And I hope that this is a program that lasts a couple of months and isn't just a one-off. And maybe it ends up bleeding into SummerSlam. 
uh, and uh, you know, you could build something good out of this. I really think you could. If Cesaro finds his character and who he is, this could be for uh, much more fun. And uh, uh, you know, that's that's the missing key piece. I think is Cesaro of who are you? Give us your identity. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about: Bailey and Alexa. Uh, and Nikki Cross, because Alexis, even though she's in the championship match and and uh, is the one that could potentially win on Sunday, you have Alexa Bliss absent from this program. I mean, for all intents and purposes, she's ne- almost never there, almost. And it just feels like Nikki versus Bailey, and maybe that's the feeling they're also going for. And Bailey trying to convince Nikki that, hey, you know, Alexa's using you. Look what she's done. And Nikki saying, no, she's my friend. You're just trying to drive a wedge between us. And then um, that Alexa Alexa Blass is my friend. All that stuff. Uh, and so I, I I'm enjoying this program strangely, not because of Bailey. Uh, Bailey is not doing a whole lot for me. She's just. <sighs> I don't think that she's in a place right now to, I, I don't know. She, she still has a whole lot of damage attached to her from the last couple of years. And I try to you know erase that in one night by having her win the money in the bank briefcase and cash in the same night. And some of the damage, well, I guess was repaired, but there's still a lot of scar tissue that is just not going to go away from how terrible they dealt with her over the last couple of years. And also the narrative that's being driven home here in this storyline is that Bailey has no friends and nobody likes her, blah, blah. Okay, well, I think we all know what's most likely going to be happening at Extreme Rules. And I don't think I'm going to be spoiling the pot for anybody by saying that Sasha Banks is very likely to be coming out and trying to help Bailey and even the odds. Uh, But, 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 but. Would Sasha Banks really be there to help Bailey? So that's a key question that you need to ask yourself. Um, so it would be interesting to see co-champions, co-Smackdown women's champions of Alexa or, and uh, Nikki. And it'd be interesting to see how that works. Do they both get to carry a blue belt? Do they have to carry it e- equally? Who holds the belt? I would have guessed Alexa you know, holds the belt and Nikki just claims that she's the co SmackDown women's champion while Alexa tries to uh, suffocate her and push her down that no, 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 no little one. I'm the, I'm the alpha female here. I mean, that's probably more likely the scenario, but it would be an interesting dynamic for sure. And honestly, again, I don't think Bailey's not doing anything for me. I don't feel anything for Bailey. I really don't. I think her high point as champion was when she wore those Forever 21 jeans in her Moment of Bliss segment with Alexa. And they had that kind of shoot work promo. That seemed to be the high point. And they never really rebounded or uh, capitalized is the word I'm looking for. They never really capitalized off of that promo and uh, and that segment. They really could have. And I just feel like it's just like, oh, oh. Like, that's how I felt. Uh, So... But again, I'm really enjoying Nikki, Nikki, uh, Nikki Cross, who is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this program and making it more relevant than I ever thought I would uh, feel like it is. So uh, hats off to Nikki Cross for really, really stepping up and getting a lot of attention and uh, getting the rub from these two of Alexa and Bailey and probably Sasha when she comes and uh, rears her head at Extreme Rules. Okay. And we also got on the show Shinsuke Nakamura and uh, Finn Balor, who had a very straight-up match, and Shinsuke Nakamura ended up winning in very decisive fashion uh, to pin the Intercontinental Champion. Not for the championship, but that's obviously where we're headed. So, again, the the WWE liked to build this as a uh, first time ever on SmackDown Live, and that's fine, that's true. And think about how excited we would have been for this match a couple of years ago. When Shinsuke Nakamura was hot in WWE, he had just come off WrestleMania, um, you know, and high and main eventing WrestleMania. Think about all that, and now we're just kind of like ho hum about it. It's amazing. It's amazing uh, how much damage has been done to Shinsuke, and I think there's blame to go around on really both sides of that. So, uh, but it was good to see. This is clearly just the beginning of their program. Uh, they both have. A lot of years under their belts, a lot of experience under the belts. They're both extremely technically sound. Um, They're both very quick, agile, 
And this could be a very fun program. Uh, I don't want to see them trade wins back and forth. That's one thing I don't want. I don't want Shinsuke to win this week. And then uh, Finn Balor wins next week and all wins this week. And I, I, no, 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 no. I need somebody to go maybe go on a streak. If Shinsuke goes on a streak and ends up you know not able to capture the championship, something like that, or um, you know Finn Balor just simply drops the belt to Shinsuke, that's fine too. I mean, we've forgotten about the Intercontinental Championship, and that's sad. Think about the lineage of this, the Intercontinental Championship and what it means. It's got 20 times the lineage of the United States Championship. Yet, look who's holding the belt. Ricochet for that. And Ricochet's done a hell of a job too, though. I mean, I can't take anything away from him. It's just that that belt and that performer are currently being highlighted a lot more than Finn Balor is as of late. And it's just a shame with the Intercontinental Championship who's uh, the, the, that belt is really just the collateral damage right here and right now. So it, it's just, I wish it got a little bit more airtime um, is really what I need. And Shinsuke too, who needs a program, a relevant program in the worst, worst way uh, is finally maybe crawling out of the hole. Maybe, I, I don't know. Um, th- that, that could be the case. I would certainly like to see that and at least get the most out of, the, out of Shinsuke Nakamura that they can while he's here and under contract. Again, I, I, I don't know the specifics of uh, of his contract, but I will say that if they don't try at least one more, ter- uh, one more time to try to maximize what they have in that asset of Shinsuke, they're doing themselves a huge disservice based on what we've seen him and what he's capable of doing while it hasn't translated into WWE the first t- go around when they you know gave him the ball and see if he could run with it, I would venture to say it would be in their best interest to give it another another try, give it another kick at the can, let this guy try one more time to at least get a uh, on a semi roll. Not saying be the guy, but maybe put him in a prominent position as a long running Intercontinental Champion, and uh, I, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Maybe he, maybe he belongs there right now. All right. Uh, an- another little item that uh, came across from SmackDown Live this week was Ember Moon and her running into the, uh, the the duo of Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. For whatever reason, they just constantly bump into each other backstage, and Ember Moon is always doing something bizarre. And this time, she wasn't reading. She wasn't reading sitting Indian style on top of a crate, storage crate. No, no, no. She was in catering in line waiting for food. Now, l- let me just think about this for a minute. And, and again, this is probably me nitpicking. And and that's fine. But that's what I sometimes like to do when some things are so easily avoidable. If I'm a professional athlete and I might have a match that night, would me going and shoving my face with food be the first thing that I'm looking to do before I go out and perform? And why is there a huge line? You're, the show that you are getting paid to be on is on, and you're backstage in a big line, like it's you know, Noe Jose's conga line, waiting for food. I, I don't know. Just something, some food for thought. See what I did there? Uh, but anyway, she just has the Achilles heel of running into these two who are just constant bullies. And... Uh, it, it was a basically a tag team match offer, and Sonya Deville told Ember Moon, "Hey, uh, well, why don't you meet us in the ring next week and find a partner if you can?" You know, has anybody ever not been able to find a partner outside of Braun Strowman, who found like a six-year-old at WrestleMania because WWE didn't know what the hell to do with his actual partner? I, I mean, really, that was just nonsense. But Ember Moon will find a partner. Okay. Uh, and they sh- they will face off against those two next week. On the parallel to that is Kyrie Sane and Paige, and we also had Asuka. Asuka. I don't know why I couldn't think of that for a second. 
probably because she hasn't been on TV and has gone from a you know SmackDown Women's Champion losing it the week before, doesn't care about it, gets no explanation for it, and then gets put in a random tag team with uh, Kyrie Sane because oh they're both Japanese stars and they kind of look alike and isn't that cool? And Paige comes in and goes, hey, well you guys are you guys look alike. We should be a tag team. I'll be your manager because I can't wrestle anymore. Even though I'm from England, you guys are from Japan. Cool, we're in a melting pot of you know cultural diversity. I mean, is that how this whole thing happened? My explanation in about 10 seconds, as bizarre as it was, at least you got an explanation. <laughs> I mean, this is just ridiculous. But they're in a tag team, and you know, I'm fine with it. Kyrie Sane is a great performer. I love the way, I love her style. I love the insane elbow. I love um, you know what, what she does in the ring. I could do a little bit without her piratey gimmick thing that it, it, I don't I don't know. It's it's almost as if they you know WWE at the performance center said, oh you know you you know look you can be great in the ring, but Without a personality, you're not going to make it in this business, which is true. But it's almost as if that happened, and then someone came up to her and was like, so, Kyrie, what, what would you like to be? And, you know, I'm doing Vince McMahon's impression, because that's the only voice I can think of right now. No, I, 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 don't, I don't know, Mr. McMahon. Like, you know, and, you know, she sits there, and then Vince is like, well, how about a, how about a goddamn pirate? I mean, it, it's almost like she was presented with a pirate gimmick as, well, no one's done a pirate since Paul Burchill. No one even remembers that. If you know who Paul Burchill is, congratulations. Uh, but it's almost as if someone just gave her the wacky idea of being a pirate to come out to uh, the ring with, but no explanation other than just, well, it's gimmicky and it's cool, but I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know why she's a pirate. Somebody explain. Somebody explain. Is she the wench? Like what, what, what is she? Is she actual pirate? Is she, you know, Davy Jones locker? Like what, what is she? What is she? I don't know, but I'm not dissing her in-ring ability. She is amazing inside the ring. I love her work ethic. Um, but th- this, this trio is just kind of like slapstick together. Um, however, I do like them again against the Iconics who are just the most obnoxious, uh, and, uh, just obnoxious diva like women that you'll ever see. And that's fine. That's a compliment to these two. I love the iconics. I do. I love them as champion. The problem is that they have just ran and hide with those championship belts. You forgot. I forgot that there was a tag team championship for the women's division. That's sad. I don't, I don't want to forget that, but I have. And it just, they just kind of like disappeared. Like, Oh, we got nothing for you. So I'm just kind of like chill out for, you know, a month. And I don't want to forget it because it's such a big deal that there is a tag team championship for the women's division. And again, with the Iconics as champions, that's fine. Uh, I could still do a lot, a little bit longer, another month or two with them as champions, really ring this out. But have them be on the show every week. I mean, they need to find some kind of time there for them that doesn't revolve around this Again, this is where the wild card rule rules uh, rears its ugly head, because you have stars that don't belong there that you know are going to be there because they're the biggest stars on Raw. They're going to come to SmackDown, damn it! And you have them sucking up the airtime that was supposed to be for the younger talent that need more airtime to to get over, and instead you have the, uh, the 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 older stars who are just sucking up the time, and you're doing the exact opposite of what you could be doing by actually building stars. So this whole thing is just a cluster. Uh, but, um, I, I, you know, that match with the Iconics page teased, it's happened, it's coming, it's coming. And eventually we will get that tag team championship match with the Iconics. So um, that's a little note there. We also had a triple threat match with Otis versus Daniel Bryan and Xavier Woods. Otis ends up getting the win here. Otis is, uh, she, he's super entertaining. I mean, he he's kind of like a throwback guy, but with a modern flair, easily the biggest star in heavy machinery. While he may not be the best talker out of the two, um, Tucker is kind of the mouthpiece. Otis is that big, hunky, kind of farm boy looking, but can do crazy gyrations that you don't expect him to do. So he's kind of wonky, but serious. Like he's got a nice combination. He's got a good, unique look. He does the uh, the worm. Oh wait, no, he's not Scotty Too Hotty. He does the caterpillar. Uh, so he's got some things that you would never expect him to do that he does. So it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I, I like heavy machinery. I think that they are a nice and they are a addition to the, to the SmackDown tag team division that 
desperately, desperately needs depth and that they're a key piece right now. Do I think they need the championships right now? No, no, I don't. I still don't. I don't want them to be champions in 2019. That's right. I don't want to see them hold the belts until possibly WrestleMania. When you get them hot, you get the fans ready to see them as champions. You don't feel like they're just being hot shotted and that they have earned your respect as uh, as performers, as wrestlers. And then it's time to crown them as uh, as your champions at WrestleMania. I mean, I really would go out that far. I would. I really, really would. Um, we'll see how far that they can go. So my point is, though, too, I still want and need Daniel Bryan and Rowan as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I also think that they could benefit from more airtime as well, the, that they haven't really got a whole lot of time to reinforce what their mission is. You know, Daniel Bryan, when he became this super, super vegan on his high horse and then saving the, the planet and then team with Rowan, who, who, who became super relevant and got redefined as a monster and they had some momentum going. Kind of got sh- cut short and the, the promo stopped and the the the, the airtime got cut in, you know, like a third. And so I would like them to just restate their mission. Give them, uh, you know, a a little bit of promo time next week in the ring. Like, don't just rehash it, but give us something new. Give us something that they want to do. Why do they want to hold on to the belts? Uh, Give us something that we need as fans to continue to invest in these two or, and hate them. Right. Because I love to hate them right now. And that's a, that's a credit to both men. So, I just, I, I don't know. This tag team division is super thin. <laughs> it's, I mean, outside of Daniel Bryan and Rowan, they made heavy machinery in the new day. Who's, um, who, who's there? Who is it? I mean, it's just going to kind of be those three and then everyone else. I mean, really? So, okay. So Otis comes out on top in this match. And, uh, as I believe he should have. And then, as I mentioned in the main event, not only did you see the stunner from Kevin Owens on Shane, but Roman Reigns ends up winning. Um, the, the sleepwalking Roman Reigns, yep, he was maybe having a night terror and uh, woke up from his nap backstage, did a, a zombie-like interview, and then went to the ring and did his usual video game moves of hitting, you know, his special moves. And he must have had enough stored finishers to be able to, you know, hit the spear just in time. And we get a nice, another robotic win from Roman Reigns. I'm not understanding what is happening with Roman right now. If they're intentionally booking him to be this too cool for school guy, it's not working. It's it's really really damaging his character because if I said this on last night's show. So if you didn't listen to it, I'd encourage you to. But if Roman Reigns doesn't look like he cares and doesn't tell me he cares and show me he cares, I don't care as a fan. I really don't. I mean, he's just he's just so blah lately. Like, there's no life. It's like the mind flayer got inside of him. And, you know, we're, he's he's just needs he needs a leaven to pull it out of him. Those of you that are strangers, Stranger Things fans will understand that. So the rest of you are like, what the hell is he talking about? Go watch Stranger Things. Well, specifically Stranger Things 3. But, uh, yeah, I, I, by the way, Stranger Things 3, quick review on that. For those of you that care, uh, I, I really, really, really enjoyed this season. I think it was the best season that, that, uh, that this series has ever had. It was very easy to follow. It wasn't... Uh, here and there and everywhere. It wasn't perfect by any means. And I'm not going to give away spoilers and give you specifics. These are just generalities. Uh, it was very well done. Yes, it leaves it open for a fourth season. They'd be Netflix would be stupid not to order another season. Uh, and the producers would be flat out stupid to not want to produce it. It was the highest opening release streaming wise in terms of numbers of any release ever on Netflix. Yeah, nah, I don't need a fourth season, right? <laughs> okay, um, but go watch Stranger Things. So that's my Stranger Things reference for the evening. Um, and so one last thing I would like to talk about, though, uh, is WWE constantly wanting to you know, use the phrases making a statement or sending a message. So you're either making a statement or sending a message. I mean, boy. How how overused is that phrase? Seriously, 
Think about that. How often do we hear that from Michael Cole or from Todd Phillips or from Corey Graves or from Byron Saxton that, that oh, they're, they're there to make a statement? Oh, uh, you know, Randy Orton is sending a message to Bray Wyatt. I, what I mean, really? <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's got to be a different way to say that these stars are trying to show their opponent what they're going to do to them. I mean, maybe there's not. I, I don't know. I don't have a thesaurus in front of me. My point is, I'm, it's just such a uh, overused phrase by announcers that it's both both of those words just needs to just disappear for a while. Uh, everybody's not sending a message, okay? Not everybody's trying to make a statement. They're making a statement to the rest of the tag team division. So I mean, so what are they going to do? Stand at a podium and and read the statement? No, oh, it's metaphorical. You you know, like okay, I get it. My point is find another word. Go to the, uh, the nearest thesaurus and find another word. Please. Words out of those two. Okay, I don't know why that really just it's just something that I thought about this past week on SmackDown Live that it's just oh my god everything's a message or a statement. So, all right, guys. Well, uh, that is my SmackDown Live review for this week, and uh, I again solid show, solid show. So we got a sleepwalking Roman Reigns. We got a little oh yeah, and the Kofi Kingston interview, which really didn't do a whole lot because there wasn't much context there. And then uh, really centered around Kevin Owens, who is full-fledged babyface at this point. I don't think that leaves really any doubt in anybody's mind of where Kevin Owens is at in terms of a role of his character. He is, I think, full-on babyface from this point on. And there's no more doubt. There's no more doubt after everything he said ended on SmackDown Live. And, and um, again, I'm really looking forward to seeing where they take Kevin Owens and his character in the next few weeks and months uh, with his newfound... Uh, his newfound character. Okay. And also Bray Wyatt, whenever the hell he's going to debut, I really missed the Firefly Funhouse. Please bring it back. I know the, the, the rumor is that, you know, he's days or months or weeks or apparently his return's imminent. Give us a Firefly Funhouse episode and just let him, know, let us know, like, see you next week in the ring. Like, you know, and, and there's ways to do it where you could, he, he could let us know he's going to be there live. Um, and so, I don't want them to rush it, but at the same time, like I, I, I've lost touch with the character of Bray Wyatt. I wanted, I want that connection back. I used to love those, uh, love those pre-taped segments and vignettes. Loved it. So, all right, guys. Well, that is the show for SmackDown Live review tomorrow. I'll be back with my co-host, and we'll discuss everything from uh, this past week in Raw and SmackDown to, of course, our predictions for the Extreme Rules pay per view coming up this Sunday, July fourteenth. Um, and so that's going to be a fun, fun show. You don't want to miss it. Again, check out WWEpodcast.com or contact me on Twitter at the WWE Podcast. This show and a new article will be going up uh, in the next probably couple of hours. So check that out. And until next time, I'll talk to you then. So here's a question for you guys. Do you know what tomodachi means? In Japanese, that means Friendship. And it's also a great clothing brand that was made for friends by friends. The artists for this clothing are grassroots independent young artists trying to make a living off of their art. And this website serves to provide them with a platform to showcase their work and give them the opportunity to put amazing art on clothing that people can wear to support and promote them. So what kind of clothing can you find on this website? Well, it's all inspired by the Japanese streetwear, straight from Tokyo. And it's got everything from men's t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts to women's clothing of hoodies and t-shirts and accessories such as beanies, bags, cases, snap bags. And there's also a premium collection with hoodies, sweatshirts, and accessories. It ships around the world and you can find them at tomodachiclothing.com. That's T-O-M-O-D-A-C-H-I clothing.com that's tomodachi clothing.com and you can also find them on instagram at tomodachi clothing if you want to get a sampling of their their clothing line which has some really cool designs on uh some of their shirts and uh accessories so check out tomodachi clothing.com you'll be glad you did